Welcome to Passion for Sound, the channel dedicated to thorough and honest reviews of headphones, earphones, DACs, headphone amps, other components and accessories. Basically everything audio related except power amps and passive speakers. My name's Lachlan and my goal is to explore and discuss all kinds of audio topics, even the controversial ones, to help us all find more enjoyment from music. Thanks for watching and enjoy the video. Hey folks, welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review and today a look at the Shanling UP4. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you'll have seen me do a couple of Shanling reviews now, including the Q1 DAP and also the AE3 IEMs. This is a bundle of four items that were sent to me by Andy over at Melbourne Chi-Fi Audio, so thanks Andy for sending these over. And so far, I've been mostly very impressed by the Shanling products. The AE3s were a bit of a bump in the road, but the Q1 was fantastic. The UP4, which I touched on in my BTR5 review, that's the FIO BTR5, the UP4 has really impressed me as well. The UP4 is a USB or Bluetooth DAC device, so it's a DAC and amplifier with both single-ended and balanced output and a variety of other features. So I'll talk about it in just a moment, but my key questions coming into this review was whether or not it outperforms some of the other options for Shandling and indeed other options on the market, and also whether it has enough power to take care of driving all of the different headphones you're likely to want to throw at it. So come with me as I explore the Shanling UP4, starting with an introduction as to what you get in the box. UP4 retails for 99 US dollars, but here in Australia, it's about 180 Australian dollars. As I discussed in my AE3 review, sometimes here in Australia and indeed other places in the world, we do get a bit of a discrepancy between the US dollar price and what it lands on our shores for. I don't know the ins and outs of that, but the reality is if you're in Australia, it's 180. If you're in the US, it's 99 US dollars. And obviously, in different places of the world, you're going to have something within that range of pricing. I apologize that I can't cover all pricing everywhere, but hopefully I can give you enough context about the quality of the product that you can then work out if it's worth whatever it costs in your country. The UP4 uses a pair of ESS 9218P DACs, so they're the Sabre DACs, and therefore it provides a balanced output in a similar fashion to the EMN Sparrow that I reviewed recently. And indeed, I've compared the UP4 to the Sparrow as part of this review to see how well it stacks up. One thing worth noting is that even though those ESS DAC chips have massive capabilities all the way up into DSD range, in the case of the UP4, it's capped to 96 kilohertz. I'm assuming that's because of the Bluetooth functionality and the limitations enforced by those codecs. Either way, it should be more than enough for the sort of use case where the UP4 is intended for, being mobile listening, streaming and the like, that's where the UP4 is at home, and 96 kilohertz should really be pretty much enough for any of those situations. In terms of power, the UP4 is rated to deliver 160 milliwatts into a 32 ohm load using the balanced output, and it's also got a high power single ended output that can get up to 91 milliwatts. In other words, it should have plenty of power for almost every headphone you're likely to use in a portable style situation. As is always the case with this sort of device, you shouldn't be expecting it to drive anything with the authority of a full desktop setup like what I've got over here behind me, but for mobile usage and general out and about listening, it should be absolutely plenty. While we're talking features and functions, let me talk about the design of the device itself. You've got a USB-C socket on the bottom. You've then got this beautiful front and back with this shiny glass finish, a control knob on the side that's also a power button, a multi-switch button on the top that does different things depending on whether it's a single press, double press, long press, etc. And then you've got your balanced and your single ended outputs. So it's a very simple unit to look at. It feels well made, it's nice and light. It does the job essentially. Two things you can't see by how I'm holding it here is that on the front of the device is an NFC tag symbol. And what that means is you can hold the UP4 to the back of your phone or wherever the NFC location is and immediately trigger the pairing function with your phone or whatever device you're using. Right above the NFC tag is where the LED light comes on. Now that LED light is both a good and a bad thing in my opinion. It's a nice 
nice simple display method to let you know that the device is on and what's happening in the device. But because there's multiple things it's trying to communicate, I did find it pretty confusing, or not confusing, but unclear as to what the device was doing at different times. Trying to remember which color meant which codec or which color meant which gain level was a bit challenging. And whilst it's the sort of thing that once you get it set up, you're probably going to leave it alone, I did find myself missing the little OLED display that the BTR5 from FIO has. If you've seen my BTR5 review, you'll know that I preferred the UP4 overall in terms of sound quality and functionality, like the, the rotary dial I preferred and things like that but I do miss the display when it comes to remembering what I'm actually doing using the different buttons and combinations of multiple presses and the like. The good news is there's a companion app that goes with the UP4 that means you never have to rely on the LED and you can do everything through the app. To talk that through for a moment, the app allows you to do things like change the filters, change the gain level, there's a balance control, you can even apply EQ. So if you are familiar with the BTR5 or you've seen my review, the UP4 can do almost everything the BTR5 can do with the exception of not having the harmonics control. So in the BTR5, there were second and third harmonics you could add to the sound. You can't do that with the UP4, but you can do pretty much, or in fact, I think absolutely everything else. Add to that the fact that I find the UP4 to sound better than the BTR5, and I'm not even gonna factor the BTR5 into this review partly because I sent it back to the patron who owned it, but also because the UP4 demonstrated in that review that it was clearly a step ahead in sound quality. Before I talk about sound quality, the one final thing I want to mention is that with devices like this, this is common across all of this style of device, they come with a clip that allows you to connect it to your clothing to make it easier to carry, but also means depending on where you clip it, you can use it to receive phone calls. So there are microphones built into the UP4 like there are on other similar devices, and that that's going to allow you to take phone calls while you connect it up with Bluetooth and maybe using a pair of high quality headphones or earphones that may not have a built in mic. So that's an extra little bit of functionality. It's probably not a reason that you're buying it and it's definitely not going to be a focus of my review, but I did want to mention that it's there. So now let's talk about sound quality and as part of my discussion of sound quality I'll talk to you shortly about some of the headphones I tried the UP4 with and how it fared in terms of having sufficient power to maintain the right sound out of each of those headphones at different levels of output. The sound from the UP4 in isolation is really really enjoyable. It's clear, it's crisp, it's detailed, the soundstage has a good sense of size and depth and space. It's not an overly deep soundstage, but for a product like this, it's right on the money for what I expect and better than some of its competitors. There's a good sense of detail and texture, and I never once felt like I was missing anything when listening to the UP4, whether it be wired or from Bluetooth from, say, my phone. Comparing the balanced and the single-ended outputs, the good news with the UP4 is that unlike some other devices, both single-ended and balanced actually perform very well. The single-ended has a slightly more intimate sense of sound, it's a little bit smoother and a little bit less detailed, but it's still very, very good. What you notice most when going from single-ended up to balanced is there's a greater sense of soundstage width, which generally comes from a better sense of channel separation, and also the level of clarity and detail improves, but it's not like you're going from a thick, muddy, crappy sound in the single-ended to something fantastic, you're going from a really good sound in single-ended to something fantastic and balanced. Now I say fantastic, I'll put it into context as to just how fantastic it is in a moment, but it's really good and what I want to start with is saying that whether you're using single edit or balanced, you're getting a great sound experience. So let's talk now a bit about power before I get into the comparisons. Because obviously if it sounds great with IEMs, that's one thing. But if you're wanting to use it with headphones, as some of you will, you need to know if it's going to work with your headphones. I tried all of the following tests in low gain mode, so I hadn't yet switched into high gain or the, the dual DAC boost mode that it has for the single ended output. Everything I'm about to talk about was done in low gain. And the good news is that stepping through headphones like the Sennheiser HD800S, the Hi-Fi-Man Sundara, the Focal Clear, and also the Beyer Dynamic DT88250 ohm, without exception, 
every single one of them sounded fantastic when driven by the UP4, even in low gain mode. I never once felt like it was running out of puff, and that's really impressive for a device of this type. In the case of the headphones that could be run balanced because I had the right cable, so for example the HD800S and the Focal Clear, I was trying it with balanced. In the case of the Beodynamic DT880, I was actually running single-ended. So even in single-ended mode, it had enough power to comfortably drive the 250 ohm Bayers that often are a stretch for some of my other devices I've tried. All in all, what that tells me is the UP4 is a fantastic option for anything but the absolute most difficult headphones. So where I think you might find difficulty is with some of the low sensitivity, say high thumb and planar magnetics. But other than that, I don't see people having trouble using the UP4 with just about everything else. So let's talk now about a couple of comparisons. Comparisons. What I've got in the lineup here is Shanling's own UA1, which is a dongle style wired only DAC and it's single ended only. I've also got the Q1 DAC that I reviewed recently and then the Emen Sparrow. Starting with the UA1, the UA1 retails for 45 US dollars, so that makes it $44 cheaper, so about half the price of the UP4. Keeping in mind that the UA1 is a pure wired device and single-ended only, they're vastly different in terms of their feature set, but the question for me was, would the sound quality be the same? What I found if using both devices, wired and single-ended, was that the UA1 did have an edge in the sound quality. The good news though, if you're looking at the UP4, is that if you're running it with balanced, it's comfortably better than the UA1 when wired. And the great news is that even if you're using it with Bluetooth, the balanced output is so good that the balanced output using Bluetooth on the UP4 is very comparable to the UA1. So you can do away with the wires and still get excellent sound quality. It's not world beating as I'll talk about shortly, but it's very, very good, particularly in a mobile environment where you're likely to have background noise, maybe you're going to be doing other things and not really focused on your music, it's going to do a great job. So ultimately for me, if you have balanced connections on your headphones or earphones, the UP4 is definitely worth the extra investment compared to the UA1. If you're only going to be using single-ended and wired, then the UA1 definitely makes more sense. It's more compact and it's half the price of the UP4, but I'm guessing then you wouldn't be watching this UP4 review anyway, so most chances are you're looking at the UP4 and it definitely stacks up against the UA1. But what about the Q1? So the Q1 is the little DAP that I reviewed recently. I've still got it here on my desk. This is a fantastic little unit. It's a fully featured DAP that's Bluetooth capable. It's USB DAP capable, despite what I said in my review. That was an error that I made, so apologies to anyone that watched that. I've since confirmed that it works beautifully as a USB DAC as well. So it's incredibly well featured, and it's kind of like having a UP4 with a built-in display and internal memory. So from that point of view, I was really keen to see how it compared. Surprisingly, both the UP4 and the Q1 sounded both fantastic to me. I really expected the UP4 to pull ahead because of its balanced setup, but I actually found both thoroughly enjoyable. And to me, that speaks to the quality of the output stage in the Q1, doing a great job with single-ended, whilst the UP4 is still fantastic in a balanced setup and maybe has a slight edge in terms of detail and separation in the sound, but they're both excellent in their own way. I didn't go into great detail in my comparisons here, but I think I'd say the Q1 was probably slightly better in pure single-ended output compared to the UP4 single-ended output, but then when you look at the balanced output of the UP4, it maybe pulls ahead just a little bit. The Q1 though still holds its own. So for just an extra 20 US dollars, if you're interested in having the onboard memory via the USD slot, and then also having a graphic interface on the device, the Q1 may actually be a better choice. But if you're running balanced and you want the tiny form factor and the like of the UP4, that's still going to be the way to go. So by this stage, having been quite impressed with the UP4, my final question was to work out whether or not I thought the UP4 could hold its own against much, much higher price competition in the form of something like the Eman Sparrow. And what I found was that as you probably would expect in the price range where we've got 119 US dollars up against something twice the price in the Sparrow, the UP4 doesn't have quite the level of refinement and precision as the Sparrow does in its sound. Tonally speaking, there's definite similarities between the two in terms of their presentation, but the Sparrow just takes everything to another level. 
So don't think of this as a direct replacement for the Sparrow, but at the same time, the Sparrow can't do the Bluetooth, it doesn't have the EQ and the balance control and the filter control through the app. So they're also quite different options and it's gonna come down to what you're most interested in. For me, as of now, the UP4 is a product I will wholeheartedly recommend to anybody looking for a Bluetooth device to connect to standard wired headphones or earphones and also for someone that's looking for the flexibility of having Bluetooth connectivity and wired connectivity. I think in that vein, it's absolutely fantastic and a really great product, particularly at the price. It's very, very affordable for what it does and how great it sounds. So hopefully you found this review useful. I'm going to put a link down below through to Melbourne Chi-Fi Audio for those of you in Australia that might be interested in the UP4. There's no kickbacks from that. It's just a way of saying thanks to Andy over at Melbourne Chi-Fi Audio for sending through the Shanling products for review. If you're in other parts of the world, I'll put a link through to some other location or locations where you can pick up the UP4 elsewhere in the world. If you found this review useful, please think about hitting the subscribe button and the like button. It really helps the channel to grow and to continue bringing reviews like this to you. For now though, I'll leave you to the music, so happy listening, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound.